here's a little bit of a blast from the past almost um, I've just ordered this Mountfleet Models Kern kit. The Kern is a steam tug that's preserved in Liverpool and uh, Mountfleet Models have uh, produced this kit of it which is uh, not long been out and uh, I was after a model of a steam tug which I could put a legitimate steam engine in and uh, this one filled the filled the need if you like um, it takes me back a bit really because my dad years and years and years and years ago 25 odd years ago built uh, well started building a Mount Fleet Active which is a Liverpool diesel tug well semi-scale freelance Liverpool diesel tug and uh, it came in a box just like this and I remember opening it with dad on the uh, living room carpet and I've just opened this box and the smell of the fiberglass hull just wafted out and it was exactly the same it really took me back so I thought I'd film taking the bits out just so you could uh, see what's uh, going on it's not just trains here we do other things so we've got a fiberglass hull and the kernel has a slightly interesting bow profile all the plate work and rivet details there there's a little bit of tidying up to do it's uh, where it's come out of the mould. That's all right. We can get rid of that. And around here, probably going to need to dremel that off. That's fine. Bit of work. That's what it's all about. There's uh, where the propeller shaft comes through. It's one thirty-second scale, but it's quite a small tug in real life, so it's not terribly big. Um, I can't remember what the rated length is, it's about 24 inches, something like that. But uh, it'll make a nice model. Um, Cleveden Steam make a, we've already checked, um, me and Mr. Cleveden Steam, uh, there's a, the engine that uh, I'm going to be using probably is going to be the Cleveden Steam Virgo, which is the smallest engine they do, which does fit in the hull. The hardest part is going to be getting it through the hollow aperture, the deck aperture. But uh, We'll figure it out. No one's done a steam one yet, so well, somebody may be doing one now, but uh, Mount Fleet models certainly aren't aware of it. And uh, we're going to see if it's possible. I think it is, maybe a bit of a squeeze, but we'll give it a go. Um, you also get uh, put that out of the way fiberglass, just like the active kit from 25 years ago, fiberglass um, superstructure. It sort of goes like that. Uh, out of the way. Funnel. Uh, not sure if I'll use that, seeing as it's going to be a steam model. Um, it's plastic, it's a bit of plastic drain pipe, it looks like. Um, that's probably a bit unkind, really. It's probably a very high quality plastic pipe, but it, yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, we might have to sleeve that with brass, we'll get a new one. Uh, brass tube, uh, resin deck formers, uh, these are cast resin, they go across the deck, ap uh, aperture to support the deck. There's a book, you can see there how the model is finished. Um, I am probably going to do it, well I'm to say probably, I am going to do it as the one on the left which is Kern when she was in naval service as the uh, steam tug terrier. Um, it makes painting it easier because it's just all grey with, with black anti-fouling but uh, none of the other boats are naval boats so all naval tugs so I wanted something a bit different uh, a set of drawings I won't unroll those the, uh, it's a complete kit it comes with um, there's the stone tube and prop shaft uh, all the wood parts are pre-printed so everything can cut out with wire and odds and sods. Um, there's a bit more bits of plastic, a bit of glaze, glazing material. It's all very exciting. Then this cardboard box, again, very traditional metal fleet. Look at that. That's probably the biggest propeller I've ever handled for a model boat. It's uh, 
That's quite a high quality bit of kit that. I'm quite pleased with that. The the Mountfleet, the active kit years ago came with a um a white metal kit uh, propeller and uh, the blades were so because it was a casting and not machined the, the blades were so out of balance that the thing would have vibrated itself to death so dad chucked that and uh, well we still got it somewhere actually but the uh, he bought a brass four bladed propeller at great 1990s expense and we've got other assorted bits and bobs there's uh, white metal castings these are very high quality kits the Mount Fleet Models kits they're not the hardest kits in the world to put together, but they are filled with an enormous amount of detail, which is what takes the time. Um, so yeah, very good quality castings too, so that's good. Lots of resin parts too, interestingly. That'd be uh, interesting to play with. Um, barn door rudder, and the uh, stern frame, and the skeg, the... Uh, that's quite heavy actually. That's surprising. Oh, it comes with a tiller too. That's nice. They think of everything. To mods and sods. Etc. etc. I'll have great fun putting those in. Let's seal that up for the moment. It's easy to lose bits like that. Oh, there's a receipt. I won't show you. Well, I don't mind. It's, it was The kit is £300, which for what you get, it's pretty good, really. It's quite a large boat, you know. I mean, here's my hand to give you an idea. Um, it's a bit bigger than active, a little bit bigger. Um, it's also the same scale, interesting, as my Gage 1 models. So that'll be good. We can set up some, uh, some photographic opportunities. In the meantime, what are... What, I haven't made any videos for a while. I've been busy doing other things. We've gone all nautical here. I kind of got a bit inspired and started doing boat models again. Um, I started this considerably smaller model back in 2015. And uh, it's a Vixmead Bustler. Um, this is scratch built out of, well, anything really. Um, it's a balsa hull with uh, bread and butter construction planking. If you take the uh, superstructure off, you can see that. And there you go, see the step construction. And it's the outside profile is sanded and uh, carbon sanded to shape. Well, I used an old power sander actually. Um, sanded to shape. Um, plywood deck, plywood engine room cover, which is a, a bit of a tight fit actually. There we go. It goes in there, there's the stern tube running through. Um, as designed, the I've tried to build, the reason I built this model is years and years and years and years ago, before I was even thought of, the, uh, my dad, uncle and granddad started building one. And we still got the drawings, but they're very moth eaten, so I bought a new set. And I thought it'd be nice to actually, they never finished it, they built the hull, and uh, that's as far as it got really, but the, uh, and it's, we don't know what happened to it, it disappeared. It was 40 odd years ago. Um, and I thought it would be nice to actually build one. So uh, that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to keep it as faithful to the original design as possible. I changed the, the deck house and uh, arrangement. I didn't really like the big speed arrangement. I thought I'd do my own thing, which is nothing wrong with that. Um, deck house, the deck houses are made of plywood. Um, the, uh, the I had a lot of fun doing the bulwarks. There, uh, I had to make several jigs up to hold them to the deck. Um, it was a a sea of G clamps and wooden formers, but uh, it's coming on. It needs its rudder still. I've put the propeller and stern tube and the uh, uh, propeller shaft in now. That's in for good. Um, the chimney is a uh, copper tube with um, silver soldered to a. I, I'm I'm personally of the belief that certainly for models like boats, which get handled a lot they shouldn't really be I don't like gluing things on if I can help it it's got to be firmly attached to it uh, especially if it's going to be towing and there's going to be a towing point here eventually um, behind the superstructure and the general rule of thumb is with towing models I mean it's only 18 inches long but you know it's a tug so it's got to work um, the general rule of thumb is don't um, don't tow off removable superstructures because obviously it can 
tip off and you lose your superstructure in the drink and you also, you also lose your toe. Um, so that's a no-no. So what I'm probably going to do is have a, a block there with the towing, a model of a towing hook as best I can, as I can fabricate. And there'll be a mast block there, a little block with a mast on, and there'll be a, I'll put a neodymium magnet. Neodymium? Dynium? Dynium? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, in there, and there'll be a steel plate front and back, which means that the superstructure will... I mean, it's pretty. It's a good fit anyway, but it'll just be positively held on with um, uh, um, magnetism. The... Um, but yeah, going back to the funnel, the it's the, the tube is silver soldered to a turned brass base. I should have made a bit more of a casement on that really, but never mind. Which is in turn tapped and thread, thread, uh, Jordan tapped to take a bolt, M6 bolt, 0BA bolt, same thread size. Um, the same goes for the ventilators, they've also been Jordan tapped to be bolted on. So that way if I ever casually knock them, they're not going to fall off. Um, it's coming on. Um, I've just been Christmas as well. It was really progressing up until Christmas, and Christmas put the brakes on virtually everything as Christmas does. And uh, now I'm waiting just for the um, some bits to get on with the funnel. I've got to put the I've got to put another ring at the top. These are a little bit overkill, really. Um, they weren't probably weren't that big in real life those rings, but they separate out the colours because we're going to have black, white, and red. As per paddle steam Waverley. And uh, I've got to put, I've got to get these uh, brass eyelets to hold the um, steam, safety valve steam tube, relief valve, sorry, let's get some, let's get it in autical. Relief valve um, on the back, relief valve uh, exhaust tube and the whistle tube at the front. I have got a whistle for it, but a uh, little casting, but uh, obviously it can't go onto the pipes there. So there it is, it's getting there slowly. Um, it looks quite large in the, on camera, but in actual fact, it's only 18 inches long, it's not a very big boat at all. In fact, it might even sit inside the hull of uh, um, Kern. Yes, it does. Huh. It's about 170 seconds scale. One, I think I worked it out to be the best part of 160th, 164th-ish scale. It's, it's a bit hit and miss. I mean, if you... A general rule of thumb is the door would take a 00 scale man, so it's very nearly 170, very nearly 00 scale. But uh, there it is, yeah. So there's that. There's other things to be getting on with. There's, uh, that was a Christmas present as well. That's a um, Vintage Model Boat Club. Uh, model, vintage Model Boat Club. There is a Vintage Model Boat Club if you want to check them out. I'm not a member, but there you go. Um, vintage Model Boat Company launch. I've been putting that together. It's quite a quick thing to put together, but uh, very traditional laser cut parts where you would have had to cut them out before from templates but it's getting there that's going to be a fast model I, I wanted something for fast it wasn't a tugboat and uh, that's going to have a brushless motor and I've never done anything with brushless motors before so we'll see but yeah that's uh, been coming on so yeah there we go that's my kernel kit quite excited to do that I shan't start it until that's finished and then I've got some bits and pieces that I'm doing for other people I, I don't want to start them to start my own stuff until I've done those, because it's a bit un unreasonable. So, yeah, there we go. Anyway, I'm going to go to the play of Gage 1 Trains in a minute, and uh, we'll see if we can get some film there. Bye! I almost forgot the... Uh, I got this from my other half for Christmas. It's a second-hand but complete Revel Snowberry kit. Makes quite a large boat. Bit longer than the box actually, and uh, I should be converting this to radio control. It's not. It's designed as a static kit, but in my favour, well, quite a lot of people's favour actually. Quite a lot of people have converted it. Can't open it with one hand. Um, it goes together more or less like a conventional radio control boat. So that'll be a project for the future. Um, I'm not going to start it immediately because I've got other things to do at the moment and uh, it's got so many little bits in it. I mean, there's literally hundreds of parts. Um, I'd like to be able to devote uh, lots of time to it. I'll just uh, I'll just open the box and uh, show you what's inside. So the hull sort of goes together in these prefabricated sections which tab together 
effective way of doing it. There's the stern. It all locks together there. Lots of plastic weld will go in there. And then of course the drill out, put it together, drill out the hole there and you have a space for a stern tube, which I've got. I've got all the bits to convert it to radio control. Um, and then there's just an enormous pile of parts to go on it. And you end up with a rather nice 170 second scale um, flower class Corvette, which would be, be nice to, to actually build one for a change because I've sunk quite a lot of these in uh, the submarine simulator Silent Hunter 3. Uh, in fact, I've sunk an awful lot of them. And of course, you've got this wonderful box art. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a very interesting one. Apparently, they make excellent models on the water, so we shall see. Thank you, Shelley. Excellent present buying.